In this video, we're going to talk about negative exponents. Before attempting this session, just make sure you're comfortable with those rules for exponents that we just talked about. All right, so for, you've actually been doing exponents for a long time. So as long as you've known PEMDAS, you've been doing exponents, but pretty much in that entire time, it's probably like at this point, like eight years or something, you've been doing exponents. Every single time you've done exponents, it's just been a positive whole number. But there's a lot of different numbers. Why can't I just make a different number um, an exponent? All right, what happens if we start doing something like negative numbers as exponents? All right, well, here's the definition of what a negative exponent is. And there's reasons for why it's defined this way. But for right now, just know that I'm telling you this is the definition of what a negative exponent is. Um, so if I have a negative exponent, basically to me, that just is a shorthand for saying this thing wants to be on the other side of the division bar. So whenever I cross something across the division bar, then it becomes a positive exponent. All right, so in this case, I had to make the division bar, but I can always do that by making it over 1. In this case, the negative exponent is already on the bottom of the division bar, so I can move it to the top, and it becomes positive. And then this one simplifies like that. So just remember, negative exponents are a shorthand notation for saying this thing should be on the other side of the division bar. All right, one very common mistake is assuming this like negative here just kind of pops out of the front. If that was the case, we like wouldn't even define negative exponents. It would be kind of useless. Um, so please do not do this. All right, if you ever just put a negative exponent out a negative, you're definitely going to fail that skill check. You're definitely not going to get points on your test. Just make sure you don't do that. All right, so. Generally, negative exponents, because they're kind of a straightforward thing to simplify, um, and the positive exponents are what we want, most of the time when you're simplifying expression, you're going to be asked to write it without any negative exponents. So this is technically simplified. We can't combine the x and y, but we have these negative exponents, so we just want to keep going a little bit farther. All right, so we know this negative exponent here is going to be code for it once it go to the other side of this division bar. And this negative exponent here is a shorthand for saying it wants to go to the other side of the division bar. So my answer now, the y... Now it's going to be positive if it's on the top of the division bar, and the x is going to be positive. Now it's on the bottom of the division bar. So this is my final answer. All that can happen is the y moves up, becomes positive, the x moves down, and becomes positive. All, right, all my other exponent rules still apply. So I can still do with this double exponent, I still do 3 times negative 6, and 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. All right, so I simplified it in the terms of combining it into a single exponent, but I want to get it without any negative exponents. So this negative 18 wants to go to the other side of the division bar, which means it's going to pop down here and become positive. All right, this middle step you don't always have to write, but just kind of showing that I can always make the division bar if there's not one and then move it to the other side. All right, here again we have to remember we can only uh, combine exponentials with the same base, so I can just combine the things on the top, x cubed and x to the negative 7, I add those two and get x to the negative 4. y cubed and y to the negative 2, I add those two and I get y to the positive 1. I only need to write it without negative exponents, so this y on the bottom is fine because it has a positive 1 exponent, but this negative 4 exponent I don't want, and I just know that's going to move down here. And that moves to the bottom, all that's left on the top is the 1. The y is still there, it hasn't moved the x to the fourth has moved down to join it. And generally we write it in alphabetical order, so you might write it like this, but either one of these answers is fine. All right, so remember you only have to move the negative ones. If this y ends up with a positive one, just leave it there. All right, here's one for you to try on your own. Go ahead and simplify this one all right, with all these um, negative a's. I'll show the answer in three, two, All right, here's my answer, kind of the first way I thought to do it. I get 1 over a cubed. That's, that should be the answer no matter how you did it. Um, I combine these, um, combined again, and then use negative exponents. The other way you could do it, you could use negative exponents at the start. So this would, a cubed would jump to the top. Both of these would jump to the bottom. Then I could combine. Then I could subtract. And then I could rewrite without a negative exponent. All, right, all these ways, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this. You could combine these first or those first. Um, but no matter what, if you do it correctly, you should get 1 over a cubed as your final answer. As right, so a quick summary, right, negative exponents, just move a term to the other side of the division bar. Again, so it's right now, it's just a definition. 
Again, in the future, we'll kind of see why this makes sense. But right now, it's just a definition. Um, and really, it doesn't really matter what order you do things in, whether you kind of use our exponent rules first and then negative exponents or negative and exponent rules. All right, just make sure your final answer does not have any negative exponents in it at the end.